Jörg Schuh was 12 when he was first sexually abused. He was the youngest in his shooting club, where his dad was a coach. The team traveled a lot to take part in competitions and training workshops. At night, in the dormitories, he was defenseless before his attackers. We had no way of protecting ourselves. And the youngest were exposed to assaults from the older kids. They would play spin the bottle. And at the beginning, we were curious. We wanted to play. But at the end, we were sexually abused. When the bottle pointed at me, for example, I would have to go under the covers with an older boy, and no one would come and help. Quite the opposite. Once, a trainer even joined the game and participated in the assaults. For years, he would, could, say nothing. He didn't want to hurt his sporting career, his club, his father. Sometimes in a club there can be such an esprit de corps that you tell yourself that if you denounce someone, that's the end of your sporting hobby or career. You know that if you speak out, you'll be kicked out of your club. In amateur sports today, sexual abuse is still a taboo subject. Few victims are ready to talk, so few cases go before the courts. To encourage people to speak, some clubs are actively working on prevention. What is child abuse? What do victims feel? That's what we're going to be talking about. All the coaches are made to attend regular seminars to make them understand the lines never to cross. We're constantly working with young people and kids, so it's really important to be aware, to know where the limits are with the kids and to realize that you can sometimes go over a line without even realizing it. Laws change, kids change, and so do we. So it's really important to undergo frequent professional training and to always be aware. The Child Protection Association that runs this seminar has fought for years to break the silence. Anna Mess says it's key that coaches also learn to identify children in distress. Our main goal is to protect children who may have been exposed to sexual abuse. But it's also important to give the right tools to club coaches, trainers and staff so they know how to react and how to help when they come across a kid who may have been a victim. Sabine says she never knew who to talk to. As a child, she was abused by her swim coach then as an adult in her judo club. Each time, her reaction was the same. Shock and disbelief. In the beginning, I didn't know what was going on. You have to know I'm a pretty strong woman. I can defend myself with words and physically. I won't be pushed around. I'm successful professionally. But back then, when it happened, I froze. I was completely overwhelmed. Sabine wants her identity hidden because she hasn't filed charges against her attacker. Still, she hopes to break the silence. In a small sports club with just a dozen members, it's pretty hard to do prevention. To have someone you trust and can turn to. We need an outside body to call upon when you're the victim of an assault. We need a number to call, even anonymously. Right now, there's no such hotline. But according to a study from 2016, one-third of people involved in amateur sports say they have been assaulted. That's why a federal commission looking into sexual assault in Germany has launched an appeal to get witnesses to find new ways to protect people. We ask victims to come to us and we offer them a confidential discussion. Our objective is to get their testimony, to see how big a problem this is, and also, of course, to make sure that sporting clubs get involved in prevention. All the people in the world of amateur sport are being asked to get involved, so there's no reason to stay quiet. Jürg Schuh broke his silence but it's too late to press charges. So today he helps other victims of sexual abuse through a charity, because he's convinced that only by speaking out can a victim of sexual abuse rebuild their life.